Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., Julie interviews experts on all areas of clutter, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Learn easy-to-implement tips on how to release clutter and get organized to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. An award-winning professional organizer and coach, Julie also shares suggestions to help you live clutter-free for a more joyful and fulfilling life. Are you looking for information on how to get organized and reduce clutter? Have you wanted to hire a professional organizer, but it's not in your budget? Do you just need some quick professional advice on clutter or organization? Our clutter-free living classes and how to organize your life Office hours support you in becoming free, moving forward, and achieving success. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Hey everyone, no matter if you travel by plane, train, or automobile, you're going to want to have clutter-free traveling and be organized. But how can you do that? We're going to talk about travel tips such as top such as packing tips and much, much more today. All right, I'm going to tell you about today's guest, and I'm very excited. He is our first Latin American guest. Nacho Egerte is an architect by trade, but his true passion is organizing spaces. He pays attention to the flow of spaces and the way we relate to rooms and our possessions. Nacho is from Guadalajara, Mexico. In 2012, he published Nacho Organiza, the first organization blog in Spanish with tips to organize your spaces in your life. He's a member of the National Association of Professional Organizers, and his motto is Organize Spaces, Simpler Life. Welcome, Nacho. Hello, Yuli. How are you? Great. We're so excited to see you and excited that you're our first Latin American guest. So let's get started. Where do people create the most clutter, and what are the most common mistakes when it comes to traveling? Okay. I'm going to... Uh, answer your question with my own experience. In my past travels, I used to travel with uh, two set suitcases, at least, okay? Three quarters, perhaps a half of one suitcase is uh, where things I really needed. So, the rest of the suitcases were things just in case, but soon I realized that system didn't work. So I figured it out how much of the stuff I collected in my suitcase are really important to me and to my travel. That way, I came up with the idea of traveling light, so uh, it was more convenient for several reasons. So please, people, never attempt to make a suitcase without a written list because we tend to put and put more and more stuff in your suitcases. So chances with this system are that you'll put more things that you really need. Take with you only the things you really need and you really use, not just in case things. Be smart, not abundant. Oh, that's fantastic, and we're going to get into a little more detail later. But talk about some of the benefits when you travel light, travel right. You know, here in, um, I don't know if it's the same in Mexico, but in America, most major airlines now, if you pack, you get a carry-on, but if you pack one suitcase, it's $25 each way. So if you pack right, then you can save money. That's just what the, obviously, if you're flying. But what are the other benefits to clutter-free traveling? In Mexico, it's pretty the same thing with airlines. Well, one of the benefits of traveling light is less stress, less things to worry about, and of course, in case you travel by plane, less overweight fees. That is important because you save money, okay? Especially, as I told you, nowadays, the airlines charge you for almost everything, even the water or the soda or whatever. What's the point of that, okay? Well, if we're talking about road trips, imagine a road trip where four to six people are carrying two suitcases and one carry-on each. How much amount of space do you need 
just for things when the important thing is the people and the fun you will have with your travel okay that's one thing it's important to take in account never 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 travel with too many things or so much stuff okay fantastic now do you have any separate recommendations for domestic versus international travel for me the criteria is the same yeah carry just what is needed not everything else not just in case things try to use smaller suitcases and refrain yourself to that amount of space only that space okay the only point I want to emphasize, emphasize, especially in international trips, is keep always your documents with you, like uh, passport, um, credit cards, IDs, visa, um, even the hotel and flight reservations. Okay, because you probably need one or more t documents for your return to home. So keep those with you very safely. I found vital traveling light especially with travels to another country because one thing you pass for so many checkpoints and that is a trouble you know okay it's really complicated also always check about flagging and custom regulations because not everything we want to carry is possible to carry into another country you know you need to know what kind of thing you can carry or what kind of thing you cannot carry with you okay no matter if it's yours check uh, if your carry-on suitcase or your documented bag is the same check for uh, embassies websites and check all you need to know before you make a trip it's very important okay that's a great point you know here in the US when I first moved to California and I, di I didn't know this until I was at the border you have to kick out all your fruits and I believe vegetables too because uh, because if you have a, a bring in a fruit or vegetable that's not a native crop it can kill off yes the crops and so it's that important they stop you at the before you enter California and that's domestic travel for those of us in the US and say alright ditch it here we, you can't bring it in yeah I want to add up something uh, mostly when we travel uh, by plane at the security checkpoint you need to take off your jewelry your watch your pockets at your pockets take off your coat uh, empty your uh, suitcase you need to uh, show all your uh, electronic devices and that is very important don't uh, try to fly with all you know your accessories and jewelry and, uh, and clothes that are very hard to take off and then back uh, back on so try to use very uh, smart uh, clothes and few uh, jewelry or uh, a watch even the belt you need to remove your belt or your shoes so there's no more glamour in flying there is not I can tell you the last time that I flew on an empty plane and didn't have security and that was right after 9-11 I have not had an overseas trip to France hmm. uh, about a month after 9-11 happened the plane was empty I mean there were hardly any of us because most people had had, tr had canceled travel and we thought well we're gonna go for it and and see what happens and thankfully we were safe but those days of of empty planes and you know and arriving at the gate a half an hour before your flight those have gone I wanted to know your thoughts on this one thing that um, I now keep I use Evernote and I keep electronically my passport number and a picture of it and things like that but I used to also keep a copy in my carry-on I mean I would have everything that I needed in my purse but just in case something happened yeah. at the hotel or that you can keep in the safe I think that's another good tip do you agree yes I agree yeah you can uh, have a backup copy in your cloud even for if in case if you lost even your uh, smartphone you can uh, rely on having your copies of in an iCloud 
for your flight reservation, hotel reservation, car reservations, visa, passport, a copy of your IDs or maybe your credit card in case they were stolen. Mm -hmm. But just for the fly, just for, just for the travel, not every day. Now, I want to talk the biggest challenges to traveling light. You mentioned earlier, people are like, I need to bring this, this, and this. So talk mm. about the challenges. Yeah, about the challenges. Well, we have too many challenges. The first one is uh, we need to keep our real necessities on check, okay? Do not attempt to bring, you know, too many books or too many shoes or too many dresses or too many whatever you try to be mindful about the things you really need because if you're going I don't know what about a mountain trip and you'll need probably sneakers uh, probably a, co a good coat but you won't need uh, heels or you won't need maybe a swimsuit or I don't know you need to keep your real necessities on check. Be mindful about that, always. Uh, another thing, you need to, I, I, I said this before, you need to try to defeat the I'll pack this just in case feeling. Do not panic. Do not panic ever because uh, most of the cases you won't need that much clothes or that much books because you don't, won't have time to read all of them. So maybe one book or use digital books. It's a really, really, really smart way to travel with digital books, with digital music. So you can uh, defeat the old pack dish just in case feeling. Okay? Other challenge. What happened with uh, the time we set for making our suitcases. How many friends or relatives do we know that make the suitcase two hours prior a, <laughs> a trip, even in international trips? Oh my God! Is it, uh, uh, what 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 is the result of that? You end up with uh, feelings of discomfort because you forget this or that that was important to your travel and you packed all the things you really don't need in your travel so please be mindful about the time you set for making your suitcases two days maybe maybe one week I don't know I am pretty OCD in that kind of things but I'll pack maybe one month prior to my trip but it's too much I know that okay I think that's uh, the most important challenge that we have to um, defeat in order to make a pleasant trip now can you talk about any must-haves or leave behinds when traveling I am reading the novel wild right now and I don't know if it's out yet it's it's gonna be a movie here that's coming out but this woman was hiking like on a thousand mile trip and overpack and every okay. time she meets someone all these men were like oh my gosh we can't believe you packed and one went through and like you know you come on now you do you really need this and think about that you're this is what you're carrying for a thousand miles so it can even you know packing light can even go what you really truly need just for hiking so what are the must-haves and leave behinds that you can okay. share <laughs> to me a must-have I said it before copies of vital documents like passport, uh, hotel and flight reservation, a copy of my visa, a copy of my um, ID. So I back up all of them uh, into my cloud. So in case of I lost the paper or I lost my wallet or I lost even my smartphone, I can rely on taking a computer and access to my cloud and retrieve some documents just in case. That, that is a must-have to me. Uh, must leaves. This is so simple to me. Toiletries is a big problem. Why? Because we tend to travel with uh, 
big bottles of shampoo, big bottle of lotion, uh, hand lotion and body lotion and perfumes or whatever. So try not to do that. I use uh, to travel with uh, small bottles, but now what I do is uh, looking for sachets of uh, shampoo, seal sachets like uh, envelopes. They uh, to they 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 uh, sold this in grocery stores and uh, pharmacy drug stores. You can find your shampoo, your hair gel, your uh, even um, little towels with uh, essential oil oils or uh, perfumes. It's a better way to travel. Even if you're traveling and you're check in into hotel please use the hotel toiletries. They're a big plus to me, at least to me. Okay? And another tip I've got is uh, when you travel and will stay with family and friends, you can pack less clothes and ask them for their washer and dryer. For example, I took a trip uh, three weeks uh, and I just packed uh, seven days worth clothes so I was washing and drying all my clothes and that way I just packed for one week not for three weeks and uh, uh, before I returned to home I washed and dried everything in my suitcase so that moment I arrived my home I just packed all the things uh, to my closet and uh, into my drawers Oh, I like that. We, I'm definitely going to steal that tip. I think that's wonderful. Now, do you have any different ideas or suggestions, whether it's business versus pleasure travel? Well, uh, uh, although the criteria is pretty much the same, uh, in a pleasure trip, we tend to uh, trip, uh, we, we tend to travel with a uh, lot uh, clothes. So be mindful about the uh, clothes you'll use. Please, you, you separate mostly when you can mix and match your separate, especially for women, because probably a dress is not that uh, versatile as a shirt and a skirt. So in the case of men, well, we all know that men are less worried about trends or mismatch outfits, okay? So it's the best way. First thing, what are you, what, will you do, where are you going, and be mindful about the clothes you use in those cases. About business, uh, probably the best tip I can, I can uh, give you is uh, look up for smart suitcases and briefcases like those with casters and wheels because you, want, uh, ha you, you, you don't want to have a, a hard shoulder carrying you know all the reference materials, documents, uh, your laptop or whatever you carry on a business trip. So try to use smart suitcases like that and uh, prefer those with external pockets. So you can retrieve some pen or piece of paper or business card quickly and easily. Wonderful. Now, you gave a great suggestion to not wait to the last minute to pack, but do you have any other tips to help us pack well? Yeah, I, I listed six of good tips here. I'm going to read it. Tip one, you need to pack just essentials. This is important because we pack so much stuff and we don't really need those things, okay? just essential. Tip two, this is the criteria to me that it works always. Lay your clothes folded in half longwise, you know? Your pants, your uh, shirts, your blouses, okay. And lay down in a rotatory criteria on your, uh, in the bottom of your suitcase. First, a pant, then a shirt, then a skirt, then another shirt, like a cross, okay? You're, if you're making a cross with your, with your garments, and then you'll start to fold in one another, one another, uh, in a, um, like your uh, clockwise, first left, then up, then right, then bottom, and so on. That way you'll 
uh, you'll end up with uh, less uh, space taken in your suitcase. That is important because when you uh, fold your clothes separately and you put them in your suitcase, they take more space. You think oh, is th that that won't be necessary the reality no but it is because there are too more too much folded too much folds in your clothes so it's not a good way if you use this uh, like cross uh, alternated system you'll el el end up with less uh, space taken in your suitcase tip 3 use a space saver bags especially for bulky items like sweaters sweatpants uh, sweatshirts coats even some kind of shoes can be uh, packed in space saver bags. They take all the air, the extra amount of space they take, so you can put them in your suitcase more easily and neatly. Okay? Tip four use the voids. The voids are your best friends especially those inside your shoes. You can put inside your shoes, I don't know, a socks, uh, a belt, um, even undergarments if you put it in inside a bag, a plastic bag. So the boys are your best friend. Even those little boys between all the garments, you can put some little things inside the, those boys. Okay? Tip five, put everything spilling risk inside Ziploc bags because you don't have problems if anything of those um, toiletries spill over your clothes, okay? So when you arrive to your destination, you'll arrive with a neat and dry suitcase. Seat clothes are the best to me, especially those with two seal. They have got two uh, spaces, with, like two zippers. Okay, and tip six, this is for people who suffer from anxiety. If you suffer from anxiety of your bags going missing, packing in your carry-on bag a set of undergarments and probably a shirt or a blouse. So you'll have clean clothes when you upon your arrival. So if your bags gone missing or they uh, came in another fly, you won't have that anxiety feel, feeling for, from missing your bags. Okay? That's all my tips. That's well, wonderful. Six of them. Six of them. <laughs> no, that's good. That's plenty to get people started. Now let's talk a moment about souvenirs. Do you have any tips when you're visiting a place that you just don't bring up a bunch of clutter that comes back in your suitcase? That is an interesting question because on my first trips I used to uh, bring back souvenirs, you know, keychains, um, casino ships because I travel a lot of, to Las Vegas. Uh, what else? Well, you name it, everything. Mugs and bits and pieces from souvenirs. Suddenly I realized how bulky, how heavy, and how expensive they are. And especially in international trips where the overweight fees are very, very high, I realized that it wasn't a good idea bring uh, souvenirs back home. So I am not bringing any at all right now. What I do is taking a good picture on my travel and then back home I make uh, mugs or magnets like this one. I hope this, this photo was taken in Atlanta is an aquarium and this one is um, from Chicago. I love that clock in uh, Macy's. So this way I spend less money, I have less worry about my things get uh, lost or broken and can give more uh, souvenirs to various people, friends and family. This is my tip about not taking uh, at least not taking that much space on your suitcase for souvenirs, okay? I can recommend you to maybe uh, a souvenir, something that is clutter-free, like a postcard or if it's a souvenir for your home, maybe a little painting 
you can hang on, on a wall so you don't have any trouble stuffing your closets or your shelves with the things you just bought by an, an impulse of having something from the place you went. So I, that is I love that. I do the painting thing. Every time I travel, I get a painting, and I usually find there are tons of street artists, usually no matter where you are, who do wonderful things, and, and they're a great memory. Now, what advice would you have for someone who maybe isn't to the mug, which I think is a really fun idea, too, or the painting, and they, how would you suggest they organize their souvenirs if they're looking for tips for that? Okay, well, like always, uh, I try to... Uh, say things about my experience. I've gotten home a little shelf where I put all my souvenirs, those I bring back home or those was given me. Like I, What I really like about souvenirs uh, is uh, keeping smaller souvenirs, two inches tall, like this one from Vegas or this one is from Russia. It's a little matryoshka or Russian doll, so this way I can display them all over the shelf and I refrain always to that amount of space. I dislike very much having pieces and bits from all over the place, all over the house. My mementos are in the same place always in that shelf. Even I have another place to collect. My main door is metal, so I put them uh, magnets from places we visit and even from Cirque du Soleil show because we are such huge, huge, huge fans from Cirque du Soleil. So there are my two places where I put all my uh, souvenirs and mementos. Wonderful. Now, do you have any final tips for clutter-free traveling that you'd like to share? Yeah, I want to tell you, carry only, 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 only. I remark this, only what you really need, not anything else. You need to shut up the just-in-case little evil boys, okay? That's the main, the main advice I can bring you because it's not worth it. Uh, travel with stress, travel with too many stuff and with too many suitcases is really, really um, energy sucking. I, I, I really don't like. I used to do that. I'm not doing that at all. Wonderful. Okay, now any tip on any area of clutter? One final tip that you'd like to share with everyone? Yes. Uh, I want you to to treat your home like a sanctuary, okay? It deserves respect, first of all. Why do you see you, you keep stuffing it with things that aren't meaningful, important, or useful? Try only keep things that are meaningful, important, and useful in your home. It's your sanctuary. Same goes to your schedule. This is important. Your time is the most valuable resource you have. It is not renewable. So use it wisely, always. Do not overschedule. That would be my, my two tips. Excellent. Okay. I, love, I love both of those. I think those are outstanding. Now, Nacho, tell people about how they can find out more information about you or anything else that you'd like to share. Okay, I publish uh, my blog and in, on my site, nachoorganiza.com. I publish twice a week in Spanish about topics about organization, organizing your home, organizing your business, and even you can find me on Facebook, Google+, uh, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Uh, or even if you want to, you can send me an email to nacho.e at nachoorganiza.com. I service the metropolitan area of Guadalajara in Mexico and I am one of three POs registered to NAPO in my country. One in Monterrey, one in Ciudad de Mexico, Mexico City, and myself in Guadalajara. Outstanding. Now you have to do one other thing. So I've only had one other guest who did this in uh who is from Finland, can you say clearing the clutter inside and out in Spanish for us? 
Ok. Vamos limpiando el desorden de adentro hacia afuera. Ok. I have to watch that about a thousand times and I might be able to say it correctly. Nacho, I want to thank you for joining okay. us today. Thank you, Julie. I'm so thrilled. I was so nervous because this is my first English interview. So I expect to fulfill your, your expectations. No, you were outstanding and your English is much better than my Spanish and we'll definitely <laughs> can't wait to, to get this out to everyone. And I want to remind everyone, go out and clear some clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Are you looking for information on how to get organized and reduce clutter? Have you wanted to hire a professional organizer but it's not in your budget? Do you just need some quick professional advice on clutter or organization? Our clutter-free living classes and how to organize your life office hours support you in becoming free, moving forward, and achieving success. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Thanks for tuning in to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of 10 Clutter-Free Living Tips. Ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Learn about Julie's coaching, ebooks, online monthly decluttering classes, how to organize your life, office hours, and her unique clutter free living mastermind at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. You can also watch all episodes on YouTube or download on iTunes and more. Join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.